Hello you beautiful people, welcome back to the channel. Thank you ever so much for joining me in this episode. Firstly, my humble and sincerest apologies for being absent for so long. Things have been pretty hectic in my life, so uh, the uh, modeling bench has had to take a, a step back. Fortunately, things are sort of stabled out now, so I'm back at it, which is uh, good news for me and hopefully good news for you. So I hope we've all had a good summer so far and been enjoying the hobby and hopefully getting out and enjoying what we have had of decent weather over the last few months. So it's pretty obvious that things have changed since I left you in the last episode. Now, I need to really apologize here. This is purely due to the fact that Clever Clogs here um, in his wisdom decided that he would format his CF card whilst out shooting aircraft photos. Then suddenly realised, hang about, all my video footage from painting the F4 is on said CF card and now it's all disappeared. So my humblest, and I do mean humblest apologies, but all the work, and there was so much footage as well, has been deleted. So what I'm going to do in this part of the episode um, is just run through what I've done, get you up to speed of where we're at, and then pretty much just cover what we're going to do going forwards for the rest of this episode and the next episode coming. So as you can see here, we're pretty much all painted up now. This was this was pretty simple job, but what I will say is metal work is not my forte. Um, as you can see here, I've done the hot work here on the rear of the aircraft, and I'll just zoom in on that section now for your viewing pleasure, hopefully. See, now I've seen lots of different variations of this section. I don't think there's a right or a wrong answer to this. I think it's very much um, in the eye of the beholder. So uh, you guys go with what you feel is correct. Uh, I didn't go with over over the top with this one because I've seen in I've seen it somewhere these this sort of section here is completely striping I'm hoping that the camera is going to pick up that I have done some sort of ribbing here uh, just sort of in these sections here but I've seen it look really stripy in some sections and then um, in other videos and builds I've seen it where it doesn't look like it at all so I've tried to sort of go with the happy medium and I've also used lots of reference footage from the Japanese F4 EJs which I have to say seems be a little bit more cleaner than their American counterparts and German counterparts. Now I know at some point these were re-engined so these were less sooty so the black here um, was significantly reduced. I don't know when that happened, I'm not a massive guru on these sort of things but I know it did happen. Now you're going to have to excuse because I'm actually videoing live here and I live under the departure of an airport so you can probably hear that in the background. I had a departure day or morning should I say and the minute I get the camera out we get a departure but there we go I digress you know it's all aviation related I suppose anyhow we carry on so I've sort of done light ribbing on here and I've sort of smoked it out a little bit to sort of give give a bit a fairly accurate rendition of it I'm not saying it's perfect I'm, you know, I'm sure there are people out there that can pull this apart easily but uh, I'm happy with it and quite frankly that is what modeling is all about we should all be happy with what we've created um, and obviously try and be as accurate as you want to be okay if you don't want to be accurate don't be accurate be accurate and be fastidious with it then then by all means do so so this section admittedly does still need some weathering which is great because that means I haven't deleted that footage and you can join me with that part of the build so what I did do is I I, I, I metalized all of this and then I used some of this stuff which is uh, Tamiya's XF85 rubber black and I just lightly dusted over these sections here just to give them a sort of vague smoke effect because like I say they weren't too dirty on the actual aircraft. Now I'd love to be able to just, I'm, I'm so sorry I couldn't run you through exactly what metals I did where because unfortunately this was a few months back now and quite frankly I've forgotten but what I did know is I used a, a mixture of, of these these colors it's um, Mr Hobby's excellent Mr uh, Metal Color and, and Super Metallic um, SM203 and MC213 this one is stainless uh, this one here 
trying to get the camera to uh, do its thing is super iron now I use some of that now you're gonna have to go out in the wild and do this on your own guys and figure it out just like I did there, there are lots and lots of um, references on the internet and there is a couple of channels where if you um, YouTube up um, F4EJ and um, they run you through what they did with their exhaust and I sort of mimic that to an extent uh, we've got SM205 super titanium and the excellent and I cannot rave about this enough Mr. Hobby number no. 8 silver this stuff guys if I can recommend a silver it is this one it lays down perfectly it goes rock hard and it is a proper nice shiny silver so go with this if you ever need anything in that color range so I use those but I also went back to my trusty AK interactive metals um, I don't know where I stand with these um, people because they take an age to sort of go off and they seem to have this sort of tacky effect afterwards so I sort of I use this sparingly, but it's AK483 gun metal. That was very, very useful. And then we've got uh, AK671 metallic smoke. And last but certainly not least, AK476 steel. Yeah, like I say, that those those colours take a, an age to sort of fully cure. So I, I tend to use them sparingly. And sometimes I'll seal them in with some Mr. Hobby, uh, either gloss or flat uh, clear coat, and that sets on it and goes rock hard. But again, get a, if you've got a paint mule, experiment with them and see what suits you. Because as you can see now, this is all perfect now, there's no tackiness. I know, okay, this is for a few months down the line, but it actually sort of achieved that status pretty quickly. Okay, so I'll spin her back over and we'll zoom back out. By the way, what do you think to the live sort of section here where I'm talking as I go along? Do we prefer this over the uh, the footage and then I narrate over the top? Let me know what your opinion is, guys. Um, for the rest of this video, once I leave this section, I will be doing um, the, the videoing and then narrating over the top. So let me know what you prefer. You'll get the, be you'll get the both of them on, the, on this video and let me know which you prefer. Okay, so we're back down to the fuse. Um, well, back down to the top of the aircraft. Now, the fuselage was painted using this excellent stuff. It's MRP is um, 097. It's US Dark Ghost Grey, and it is an excellent color match for the paint job that we're doing. And that stuff is pre-mixed, and it sprays beautifully and dries very, very quickly. I cannot recommend MRP enough to you. Make sure you give it, I mean that's overexposing a bit now, but make sure you give it a good stir and get to the bottom here or, or better still put a little metal ball in there and give it a good shake up. It does need a good shake up but this stuff is truly excellent. So we sprayed all across the top here in that colour and then under on the underside I'm not sure how well the camera is going to pick this up because it does seem to be um, sort of overexposing a little bit with this. I am just going to try and adjust the iris whilst we, um, or the exposure whilst we're here to see if that will come out. There we go, it has. So this was painted using um, Mr. Hobby Aqueous Colour and it's grey FS36270 or light gold grey. Gave this, I gave this a lovely coat as well as you can see. Now, I don't know how well it's going to pick it up, but there is, you can see it just a bit there, but again, yeah, there you go, you can see it just through here. It is slightly lighter than what's on the top side, so you get the variation there. And as you look at your reference pictures for this, you will understand that that is actually pretty accurate. Uh, there is only a slight variation um, in the tones between the bottom side of the aircraft and the top side. Um, of note is the fun bit that you've got to do in here and I'm hoping it will pick it up. I don't know if you can just see at the tip of my finger there where the gun mount goes to the fuselage. I'm just trying to pick that. There you go. You can just see it through here. That needs to be grey. So um, I just a, th a thin triangular sliver, say that when you've had a few beers, uh, of masking tape was popped in there when painting this um, through and black. This does need a little bit of a touch up because unfortunately and it's something you are going to find out yourselves is this just seems to be constantly in contact with the, with my modelling mat or on, on, the, on the surface here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go for the second time and paint, spray this area over. I won't bore you with this, um, guys. And then I'm going to mask this off so that the masking tape is, is the bit that gets rubbed away and not my uh, handy paintwork. And whilst we're on the, the subjects of the black, excuse my dog walking past, um, this was a mixture because I wanted a sort of sheen as I, I'm, I'm hoping it picks up here and I will just again adjust the uh, exposure so you can see it better 
whilst rabbiting onto you. There we go, let's just see if we can bring that up a little bit, we do. Um, so I wanted to give this a slight sheen. So what I did with this, now I'm sure there's a million and one ways to do this, but I did a 50-50 mix of Tamiya's Black X1 and Black XF1. And then gave that a mix and it gave it its nice light sheen. So on top of that, I then gave it a rub down with some wet and dry just to give it that nice smooth finish. So we get the nice sort of um, light sheen there, like as demonstrated there okay and then of course it was just a case of um, working out where the decals are going to go and masking over the top here so that's where we're up to with this at the moment again my apologies for not including you in my paint job on that but it was a pure accident oh and whilst i'm looking here something also worthy of note is is the gray actually goes down to the actual wing it doesn't stop at the root it actually comes out on the wing as well okay so do check your references for that so that is you guys up to date with where we're at now one thing i would just like to to uh, talk about is the wonderful modeling community that we're all part of now again in my wisdom i don't seem to be having a wise year this year um obviously you've seen me have this canopy over the top here um, that's been glued on with ca glue just to keep it in place. Um, well, this got hazed by UV, and there's no way back from that. Um, I've Googled it, checked it out, got um, some great information off some far more experienced models than me, and there is no way back from it. Once you get UV damage on your canopy, it is toast. So, a really top chap called Peter, who come, I won't sort of go any further with names, etc., but is from um, the Eastern European part of the world sorted me out a nice new um, canopy thank you so much peter you know who you are i won't embarrass you on here but uh yeah thank you ever so much so this one has been kept out of the way so it's in perfect condition obviously it now needs to be masked and the black parts need to be um, sprayed and the inside does as well but just thank you so much i tried to pay for it. i paid, wanted to pay for postage i was really happy to do that but he, he was like, no, 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 just happy to help out. And sir, you have really helped me out. So thank you ever so, ever so much for that. What a great community. Um, yeah, just really, really appreciative. So this will be popping on here like so, but obviously we'll need to be, uh, yeah, there's a lot of work to go down the line before we do that. So we'll keep that away safe. So what we're going to be dealing up with next, and this will be narrated over, um, this won't be live like I'm doing now, is I've got my landing gear all painted up in a nice semi-gloss white that is looking massively overexposed. So I'll see if I can just do a bit of that. There we go. I tried to get rid of what I thought was the seam lines, but as you can see, this is a little bit showing through there. And I've, I, I'm going to be honest with you. You know, I hope you, you you don't hate me for this, but it is going to stay. Okay, I'm I'm not stripping that all back now. Um, I managed to get rid of it on here, so I'm happy with that. Um, it's just that one seemed to have a bit of a seam line. So got got the, the white bits of landing gear now. We're going to get her on her feet, and we're also going to. Uh, this uh, view watch me and i'm going to give you a quick i don't know if i should do this but a quick sneak if i should do this with my engines that's all you're seeing okay further down the video you're going to see how um i've done that okay so stick around for that uh, i hope you enjoy the narrating over the top of the video rather than just the live bit i'm doing here let me know what you prefer so i'll hand over to me now uh, before I go on the live bit, I just want to say thank you ever so much for all your support. Please click the like and subscribe button. It helps me out so uh, no ends. I really appreciate it. So now it's over to me and uh, enjoy the rest of the episode. Okay, that's a, a thanks to me, I guess. So carrying on with the build, I have um, already painted up the, and I quote, engine bay cooling air outlet that's what that is so uh did me homework people hey eh? you're impressed with that aren't you <laughs> anyhow moving on so we've painted these up so it's obviously just a case of attaching these to the rear of the aircraft obviously due care and attention is needed because i don't want to damage the metal effect with the quick drying cement from tamir So just a couple of very light dabs, let the capillary action do their job. 
and it sits nicely in place. So I thought I'd just speed this up as I usually do for your viewing pleasure so as not to bore you to tears. Easy peasy as you can see, nothing strenuous here. There we go, happy with that, that's all looking good. Quick dry test fit, which is always a good thing to do, of the fully variable exhaust nozzle, or afterburner cans as we call them. That fits in beautifully nicely, so happy with that. So as we're happy with that, I got on with uh, painting these. So I've painted these in gloss black as a base coat for the metallic work. I find that really just brings out the, uh, the metallics a lot sort of more more reflective if needs be or just gives it a good solid base for it to stick to. So just a case of light effective layers just you know building it up slowly don't blast it all on as I as I keep preaching to you all so we get no runs, just lightly build it up. There we go, happy with that. Okay, so I did the arduous task of masking off the inner bits of the petals so I could get some variation going forwards there. That did take me a little while, so I didn't bore you to tears with it. So using Metallic Grey by Tamiya XF56, it was on to the next colour to be laid down on the afterburner nozzles. So again, taking my time, building up the layers. I've sped this process up for you, my hand isn't going that quick, I promise. <laughs> just building up the layers as you can see. And I won't keep harping on saying the same thing over and over, I will just let the imagery tell the story. Watching the camera, not well, just obviously seeing the shiny side of things there, so off the working light. But hopefully you can make out that it does look a bit more drab now. So onto the next layer, that is AK's Extreme AK671 Metallic Smoke. So I find that this metallic smoke just tends to lose the shine that you get with the metals underneath. So it starts to give it that sort of smoky used look. Whilst you're uh, watching this, I'd just like to say thank you ever so much once again for, for checking in and for getting this far in the video so far. I really do appreciate all your support and hope that you'll stick with me throughout the rest of the build and I promise I won't leave it too long between, leave, uh, between videos this time. So there we go again, just building up the layers of different metallics and smokes and bits and pieces till we get to the desired look that we're after. Okay, next up is Tamir's um, XF1 Flat Black. Okay, so this is kind of almost like my last stage with this. Um, as you can see, it's fairly dulled down now um, from the metallic smoke, but I just wanna just add that sort of grubby, dirty look to the engine cans, um, because that's what they look like in, in, in real life, to be totally honest with you. So uh, that's what we're going to do. So we're just adding the layers bit by bit in there basically filthing it up. There you go, a little bit of a difference for it. One clean, one dirty. Once I'd done this, it was a simple case of removing the bits of masking tape. 
Again, being careful here because you don't want to chip the work that you've done, so just take your time at this stage. Showing some nice contrast there. Um, on removing this, this tape, I did think it was actually too contrasty. It's almost like clean and dirty. So of course I'll remedy that in due course. Here we go, all the way around now, job complete on that. So happy with that as a base look and effect. But there's more. Stay tuned, people. Okay, so taking a look at these, I'm not happy with it. it, it like I say, one's dirty, one's clean. But as you can see here, one's looking a little bit more grubby. So this effect was achieved by using this excellent stuff. This is um, Ammo's Starship Filth by MIG. And this is kind of like, I don't know, it's, it, uh, it's kind of like a mascara tube, I guess, <laughs> that the ladies use. Um, <laughs> But it comes up with this lovely sort of dirty look to it. Um, you just simply apply it like so. Get it all into the nooks and crannies. And as you can see, it, it, it gives like a, a, a kind of filthy, well, a starship filth look, I suppose. But it gives it a filthy look. Sort of dulls down all the shiny bits. Just working my way methodically through, and it is, a, it is advisable everybody to just use gloves whilst doing this because this stuff does get everywhere. So Ken, sped up for your viewing pleasure, just working my way through. There's no science to this really, just get it all in there, get all the nooks and crannies, go to town on it. Because what is good about this is you can wipe it off afterwards to taste basically, and what, what, to what you're, you're, what you're happy with. So it's just a case of doing the usual, getting a cotton bud or for our American friends a Q-tip and just wiping away what you don't want on there. It really is as easy as that. It's kind of like the oil um, oils that we, we've used previously in other episodes. Um, it's just a case of putting it on and then wiping away to where you're happy. Just the difference with this one is I haven't used thinners to um, wipe away the excess. There we go, just rattling through. Use as many um, cotton buds or Q-tips as you like to wipe away what you don't need. Excuse the emergency vehicle kindly going past in the background. So there we go, all good. Very happy with that. Just some nice final touches. And as you can see, it's taken that silver away, but still just allowed it to show through enough to show that it's there, but not in, in mint condition. It's been used, the aircraft's been flying. I'm pretty happy with that. So next up, we're on to undercarriage. So it's previously advertised there, it's onto the undercarriage. So this is using the aforementioned oils and to be honest, I thought it was important to show this. I actually overdid this a little bit, but I've kept this sort of on the, on the uh, video because A, I think it's important that um, on videos it shows when we do do things wrong and how we correct it. And just also show that everyone's, no one's perfect. You know, we all make mistakes. So I did overdo this a little bit, but I thought I'll just press on and keep going with it. Because at the end of the day, I can get thinners and I can wipe away what I'm not happy with. So this is just oil paint, um, oil paints that you can go to your shop, you know, like you paint on your canvas, thinned with um, two taste again, thinned, excuse me, with white spirits or mineral thinners. I prefer white spirit though. 
and just dabbing it on as you can see there's no there's no hidden sort of trick to this dab it on until as until you're happy and what this does is the capillary action again see overdoing it slightly there but there's no right or wrong way we can we can correct that in fact i have gone a little bit overboard there let's be honest but uh, as i say we can sort that out so mineral thinners or white spirits whatever you prefer and then just start wiping away and what that does is it goes into all the nooks and crannies and just in, it just highlights the details that have been kindly provided by such a beautiful molding of this aircraft i think it needs to be seen plus the undercarriage are dirty on these aircraft so i thought well let's just get it done like that and i'm fully aware that there is a mold line visible there on the undercarriage strut on the inside but that will be completely covered up by the wheel that we placed so i wasn't fussed it's, it's, i'm not a fan of making work for myself if it's not going to show up this i just don't see the point of going to town on it as you can see there i'd overdone it but we've got it all the way back now just by using plenty of thinners white spirit and just bringing it back to where to a state where I was happy, where it's showing the detail, but not overly dirty, because again, these aircraft are pretty well looked after. But of course, being undercarriage, they do pick up all the stone chips, the the tarmac that comes up um, on landing, the tire smoke, etc., etc. They do get pretty filthy over time. So still working away at it to get it back to a level where I'm happy. happy days okay that's all the undercarriage done so what i had done here is i had used mr hobby silver number eight but i just wasn't happy that it was chrome enough it, it's silver but we know that these oleos and these suspension struts etc are actually very very shiny so you can see here that this one's shiny what did you use i hear you cry well all will be revealed shortly as you can see yeah looking nice and chromed up which i was much happier with and i did the same with this one just as a comparison it can be a little tricky for it to, for the camera to show it up but it is lovely and chromed and i was very very happy with it because it's the first time i've used this and there we go reveal for you it's molotov liquid chrome okay and this comes in a pen i ordered mine off amazon i think it was seven pounds it was a two millimeter nib you can get them in various size um tips this was two millimeter in hindsight probably should have got one mil but um, i managed to make it work anyway so happy enough to make this stuff work it's just a case of get the, the tip out when you first have it and then dab it and it basically the tip fills with the uh, chrome paint we'll call it paint for want of a better a phrase so it's just a case after this of running along the parts that you want to be chromed and voila as if by magic it becomes a nice chrome strut just a case of carefully allowing the paint to come out the tip as you can see there and it does a tremendous job of just give it i just thought it was just more realistic to be totally honest with you the silver just wasn't shiny enough i love that number eight silver for what it is for metallics bits and pieces but if it's something needs to be chrome this isn't the stuff to use so I hope you'll all agree with me, that looks a thousand times better. Nice and chrome and shiny. What I will advise with this is do leave it a good 12 hours to dry. Because, as I'm sure you can imagine, I fell foul of that and uh, may have touched it with my hand to test. And uh, yes, it wasn't dry, so I had to do it again. Not with this bit, but another part. So yes, I've, as you can see here, learnt my lesson and uh, put it on one of my pegs and left it to dry until the next day. Very happy with that though.
Okay, so next up it's attaching the undercarriage itself to the uh, fuselage of the aircraft. So she's getting on her feet and I always think this is a good stage in the build. I, I tend to start to think it's getting somewhere. Once an aircraft gets on its feet, I just think yes, we're, we're just getting somewhere. Is this something personal to me? Don't know whether you agree. Hit me up with your comments in the uh, comment section below. But for me personally, once I've got the uh, wheels and the undercarriage on, I just tend to think, right, we're, we're halfway now, we're, we're, we're getting there. So th this is where I cannot praise Zukimura enough. This just clips in beautifully. It's so solid, it's perfect. And do you know what? In the cold light of day, I didn't need any cement or glue on this. I did, because obviously, Oh, excuse me, there you go. We'll talk about that bit in a minute. Um, obviously I did because I wanted it to be solid and it's just good practice, but that clips in so beautifully. I kudos to them so that bit that just pinged off honestly that has been the bane of my life with this um build so far where i've been uh manhandling the uh that nose gear strut it kept pinging off honestly i did win in the end i, I glued it on after i'd finished there and it hasn't come off since so this again talking of excellent fits uh is this just a case of slide that undercarriage strut into the part where I was pointing at. And again, it is a superb fit. I really didn't need any glue for it either. Again, best practice I did. And what's hilarious is obviously is when I did the other undercarriage strut, this clipped straight in. But of course, as I'm filming myself do it, it decided it would be a bit of a pain in the bum to get in. But there we go. Once it's in, honestly, it's such a satisfying sort of almost clip as it slides into there. Very, very good. Very happy with that. What I wasn't happy with, and the eagle-eyed of you will notice this later on, you can see my sort of brown weathering there in that undercarriage bay. Wasn't realistic enough for me, it was a bit of a boo-boo, so I got my uh, white paint out and uh, covered that up and had sort of weathered again afterwards. So just so you don't think that uh, that's, ex that's where I thought was acceptable, I wasn't happy with that. But anyway, well, she's on her feet, we're all good. As you can see there, I've painted those wheel bays and I think they're a bit cleaner now and just look a bit more representative of the real thing. So the nose uh, gear strut is now in place along with the, again, I guess strut that pulls that pulls in the, the hydraulic strut, because I haven't got my, my cutaway in front of me here to say exactly what that is, but the hydraulic strut that um, retracts the nose gear is all in. Again, that clipped in beautifully and was a work of art. My only, so one of my sort of pet hates, and what I'm pointing out here is I've just flattened off the main gear wheel because when the aircraft have got fuel etc etc the tyres obviously have a flat, well not a flat spot but they sink in a bit, they're not perfectly round. So I did that with the main gears and the nose gears. So back to what I was saying a minute ago as I show you my work with the nose gears is the main gear, the tyres were in two separate halves and I'm just thinking this day and age Kimura, we don't need that, you know, you can put that in one piece. Okay, it's a bit lazy on my part, but it is such a pain in the backside having to glue those two bits together and then carefully sand round without losing the tread, etc, etc. You could have moulded that in one piece, so you lose a brownie point for that Zukimura, I'm afraid. Anyhow, so using the capillary action with the nose gears or with the black paint, I'm sure I've shown this before on other, on other aircraft builds. I just thinned the Tamiya rubber black is what I painted them with. I just thin that down nicely and then just allowed the capillary action to go around the outside of the white part section of the nose wheel and uh, that's how we get a nice circular look on those wheels. Struggling for my words today, do apologise. So here we go, nose gear is all ready for tyres or wheels. and then clips nicely into place like so. And what I'm quite keen to do here is I want to, I use normal glue for this, not super, uh, not the quick drying because I want to get it up and on its feet, so to speak, on its wheels. Um, so I can get those flat spots in the correct place because it will look terrible if those flat spots are glued and it's not actually the point where it's making contact with the floor or your modelling desk, however you want to do display your aircraft. Very happy with that. Nice crisp 
push effect with those wheels going on to where they need to be attached to. Very impressed with that. So then it's on to the main gear and these were fantastic. The push fit, I didn't actually need any glue and you know what, for this I didn't use any glue on this because it was that snug a fit, it was just entirely a waste of time. So I threw the best practice out the window for that one. And there we go, just lining it up, which I might add was a bit tricky around the camera. There we go, look at that. Oh, I do love a snug fit like so. Very, very impressed with that Tsukimura. You get your brownie point back for that. It, that, that is lovely. So at long, long last, and it does feel like long, long last, she's on her wheels now. Just some last minute adjustments with the nose gear. Really happy now with how she's starting to look. She does look a shade lanky now on those, on those wheels, because there's no doors to sort of hide the struts. Uh, yeah, it does look a little bit lanky. Okay, on to the final bit, and you're nearly there everyone. I hope I haven't bored you to death with my video. Okay, a little chip on that, which I noticed, so we'll hold that discreetly um, by putting it in this way. It's just a case of getting the afterburner nozzles it glued into place, really. Or should I say the fully variable exhaust nozzle, as it's officially called. It really did click into place beautifully with this. Just a case of getting a bit of glue, gluing, um, getting the glue onto the back of the nozzle and then placing it into the slot. So while I'm doing this, I'd just like to thank you very much because we're very near the end of the video now. Thank you very much for watching all the way to the end here. Sorry if I've been a bit rusty in places with this video. It's been a long time. I'm trying to up my game with it now. So uh, hopefully things will only get better from here on inwards. But thank you again for all your support, for watching along, for following this build. I think next up's video will finally, finally be decals. So that's something to look forward to. We'll go with decals, we'll get the flaps and ailerons on and we'll get the landing gear doors, etc., into position. So just case now, clipping the last one in, just trying to find how that sat to. It didn't clip as well as the other one, but uh, still sits in nicely, so happy enough with that. So, as I finish off with this is just to say thank you very much again there is going to be a picture at the end of this video that I took of how she sits now looking rather gangly on her on her legs but I really hope you've enjoyed this video the next one sh shouldn't be too far in the future in the meantime enjoy the hobby look after yourselves and until next time it's bye bye for now